Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Here we are again. Um, I want a different apron this morning because I was sitting here getting ready and <clears throat> couldn't let like two minutes go by without being busy. So I was squeezing paint out of a tube of paint with the little squeezy thing and I got it all over myself. So I had to clean it up and hang up my favorite apron and I got this is my second favorite apron. <laughs> so I had to get this one out today. So hi Debbie. Hi Laura. I hope everyone's doing well. I had a little um, story the other day of what I would paint this morning and I forgot to check it at the end so I don't know which thing won. I always like doing that to see what everybody likes but let me show you which one. I know I'm always making a mess. Always, always, always. Okay, now let me turn this around because you know I hate when the camera's on me. So I think I'm going to paint these tulips. I just got these at market on last Saturday. Good morning, Sarah. Hi, Carol Ann. Um, I don't know. There's something about it I like. It's it's um, a lot of white in there, but you know, if you look at it, there's a lot of like like uh, cooler areas. Actually, what I'm thinking is that I think I'll do my shadow more of a warm uh, color um, value and my my lighter. Um, colors that I want to come forward as, as a, <coughs> a cooler color. <coughs> so, and I'm going to keep them really, um, loose. That's always my goal. Yesterday I painted a 16 by 16 peony and I love the way it turned out. It was very loose. So I'm going to try and keep in that vein. Um, and good morning, Erin. Um, so, okay, I'm going to mix colors. I forgot to turn my overhead light off today. Some mornings I remember, some Wednesdays I remember, some I don't. So I have that little, little light on here. <clears throat> so I really need like pinks, lots of shades of white. Hi, Megan. Um, greens and like shadow, shadow colors. Shadow, not shadow, background, I guess. I mean, <laughs> let me have a sip of my coffee. Okay. <clears throat> oh, Barb, is this your favorite? Good. I'm glad I picked your favorite. All right. So maybe I'll start with greens. So what green did I put out here? This is not a green that I... I don't know what green this is. I can't tell. I don't... Oh, no, this is sap green. I put out sap green, but I put out... Um, this is um, this color from Vasari that I like. It's... It's, do you think I know where I put that already? It's a blue that, it's a green shade. It's um, phthalo blue green shade. So I'm going to put a little bit of that in there. I just felt like there's a little phthalo blue. Let me show you. I feel like this feels a little, whoops, phthalo. I didn't mean to have that up there. Kind of phthalo blue. And the shadows could have a little bit of that color in it too. Although that's a cooler color and I wanted to go warmer. We'll see what happens. So yesterday I got an order from my website that someone ordered a heart necklace and I, I don't know how they got to the page of heart necklaces because it was from last year and it's like kind of hidden. So I've got to see first of all if I even still have it and that got me thinking about Valentine's Day and doing something with my inspiring art group for Valentine's Day and of course I woke up in the middle of the night and could not stop thinking about ideas for that. <clears throat> I get so distracted um, when I start thinking of like a fun project that it's a little crazy. All right, so I like that. I want to have it be, um, yeah, that desaturated that a little bit. And I guess I need a little bit of that. It's hardly any different. But I'm adding a little bit of <clears throat> um, this color that I love to mix in. It's Old Holland Violet Gray. Maybe a little yellow. 
I think what I'll do is actually mix some grays too and then kind of skew them a little cooler and a little warmer. I'll show you how I do that. But yeah, that's exactly what I was looking for. <coughs> now I'm gonna make it a little lighter. I'm gonna clean my palette knife off. Mm -mm. I'm gonna get kind of that. Mm. Oh, isn't that pretty? Well, no matter what, I'm gonna use that in the painting because I love that color. Sometimes, in all honesty, these are just colors over here that I had left over from yesterday. And I often will keep colors and just set them to the side and use them again if, if my paint's still wet enough. All right, that's fine. Now I think I'm going to mix some grays. Let me clean this up. Good morning, Anita. How are you? <clears throat> So this week, uh, this week, it was last week, gosh, time flies. I went and helped my friend Beth Bathe did um, a video on Art School Live, it's called. It's Eric Rhodes, um, his, um, I don't know what it is. It's his <laughs> YouTube channel. <clears throat> And she demonstrated how she paints, and it was it was really cool. So if I don't know, I I promoted it here on my page, but if if you missed it, it's um, a really really fun demo that she did. Um, she's also doing something with them. It's like she does a lot of plein air painting, and she's doing um, she's like. Uh, teaching in some plein air live convention. I would love to do that. She and I kind of started doing art at the same time. We were both graphic designers. She moved to Lancaster and we met years ago and <clears throat> became friends. And she went the plein air painting route and I couldn't do that because I still had a business and kids and stuff. So I took my art kind of in a different direction of, you know, just doing it from my home and doing art shows. And it's just been fun our paths always cross and she does a really nice um thing at her studio on Fridays she sets up a live model and everyone paints and I keep not making it to that and I'm going to get there soon like what is my excuse that I can't get there because it is really good to draw and paint from live models, from life. I don't do it a lot, but it's mostly because I just can't quite have the, like that's a whole nother step to set up a still life display. Happy Wednesday, Allie. Oh, her name is Beth Bathe. It, her last name is B-A-T-H-E. It's like, she says, <laughs> it, bathe is like, I'm gonna bathe the cat. Beth Bathe. She lives here in Lancaster. Pretty. Okay, so now that I have this pile, whoops, still of this white, I'm going to warm. So these are all very cool grays. <coughs> I'm going to warm that up a little bit with um, one of these kind of neutral, well, here, I'll get one out. I'm using something from the tube. I see that as if I can find what I'm looking for. I'm going to use, this is one of my Vasari colors, new one that I got. It's called Shiprock. I love it. <clears throat> So it's kind of a, a taupe color. I'm gonna mix that into my white so it becomes much more of a brown white. Clean off my, I always get paint up my palette knife. That's nice. All right, I'm gonna take that and make that lighter. I have up here. And even, do I need that? Yeah, meh. Uh, no, I'm gonna get rid of this. I feel like I don't see much of that color in here. I'm gonna use it, but it's more in a shadow area. So I wanna actually make this a little bit darker. I'm going to skew that. I'm going to add a little bit of this um, phthalo blue-green shade. Uh, with Susan said, I'm going to plein air convention. I'll be sure to look her up. Yes. Yes, do. That's so cool. 
Now, I don't know if she's going for sure or not. She's like, she, I think, like pre-recorded a class that's going to be there. But she still, I don't think she had decided. She had to do uh, foot surgery and she had to see how she was going to feel and everything. Ooh, that's really pretty. Isn't that cool? Sometimes I want to just mix up a palette of colors and paint with those colors, <laughs> whether or not they're actually in the image, which is kind of fun to do that. Okay got a mess here so I have I have whites greens yellows like I could probably almost do the whole painting with this palette um let me get I need some yellow because in the middle of the one in the front there is a yellow the stamen I don't know if that's what it's called but the little cute little thingies in the middle of the flower you think I would know my flower parts um Oh, that's, I like a tiny little bit of that vibrancy, but it's a little too vibrant. I'm going to pull, I'm going to clean my palette, my palette and pull a little bit of this color into it. It's good to have your colors of your palette kind of mixed together too, so that certain colors are mixed in. So you have kind of same colors. So that, that desaturated that a little bit, maybe even a little more gray. Oh, there we go. That's what I needed. What is your palette surface stone? Yes, it's a piece of um, like marble from the countertop store. I just stopped in at a local countertop store and asked if they had any samples I could buy. I actually have another one that's um, very similar. It's a uh, cutting board, but it has like big black lines kind of through it. And that's why I like this one the best because it does not. Okay, I think that's a good palette. It's The colors are very fun. All right. Can everybody see? Do I have it up high enough? I think I do. <coughs> so <coughs> now I'll do my <coughs> transparent colors. I need a sip of my coffee. Where's everyone listening from? I always love this part. Mechanicsville, Virginia. I've never heard of Mechanicsville, Virginia. Michigan. Rochester Hills, Missouri. Good morning. Irma says, good morning, Kim. Morning, everyone. Had retinal surgery yesterday. Struggling to see, but I'm here. Wouldn't miss it all. Thank you, Irma. I hope that it went well. How long does that take to re recover from? We do love our little group here, don't we? Good thing you didn't schedule it for um, Wednesday, right? <laughs> Did you have snow? I can't remember where you live, Irma. We had a lot of a lot of snow. Well, not a lot of snow, but more than we've had in a long time here in Pennsylvania. Just kind of mapping in um, where my greens are. There's one up here. I don't know if I'm going to keep that in here or not. I don't know if that's distracting or we're good. I'm not sure. So this. This goes like this. I think I need to put some reds in. I don't quite know where I'm going here. <clears throat> I need to put a little bit of where my flowers are. Like, I don't want to get so precious with this stage. It, it's, um... 
the less I think about it all in the beginning, the looser the painting usually ends up being. bit of that. Yeah, I am so ready for spring flowers. I know we have a long way to go. <laughs> like, I feel like buying them, but when you buy them, like, from, you know, some of those websites that you can get um, peonies. Oh, my word, they're so expensive. They're, like, cost $100 to get <coughs> a tiny bunch of peonies. And, and I'm not saying they're not worth it, but and I do use them for painting reference, so I can use that as an excuse to buy them, but it's still just so, like, I feel so, like, mm, I can't do that. All right. Uh, how much should I put in that darker, like, the background? I'm going to use, I think, my manganese blue hue as my kind of color in here. So, what's everyone up to? Anything new? Today we have a lot of snow in West Germany. I always dream for spring, me too. It's camellia season in the south, lots of blooms to paint. Oh, Susan, that's so fun. Send me some photos to paint from. I'm not even sure I know what a camellia, camellia is. I'm sure I do, I just can't picture it right now. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like I have so long to go before I fresh flowers before the um uh what are they called what are those little ones that come up first in the spring i can't even think of it right now it won't be too long till we get those the uh oh my goodness i can't remember what they're called Do I want purple in that background, blue. I'm gonna use, cause I wanted to get it out. Let's be wild and crazy and put some of this crazy blue back here. If I wanna loosen up, I gotta take risks, right? That's what it's all about. There's nothing to lose, like I, uh, crocus. Oh no, not crocus, the, um, <gasps> darn it. Oh, hell of boars, thanks, Michael. I. My brain is not working. Yeah, take some risks. You've got nothing to lose when you're painting. What's the worst thing that can happen? You hate it and you throw it away. It doesn't harm anything. As long as you have fun in the process, right? And that's how you learn. look like it's going straight across. I'm just going right through there so I can see what I'm doing. Um, do I hate where that line is? I think it's dividing it in half a little bit too much, but I, it doesn't matter. It's fine. I don't even need to think about that. Let's put some of that fun. Sometimes also, like the messier the beginning of the painting is the more I like how it ends up. So, so don't be worried about this one. <laughs> I always say that, um, that, uh, yeah, I do get afraid sometimes when you guys are watching that a painting might not turn out, but, but that's okay too. <clears throat> what do I want to do down here? I think I'm just, I have, I'm using liquid this morning. It does help the painting dry faster, but I was working on a big painting that's, that's behind me here over the weekend. And, um, I did not use liquid and I, I really like not using liquid. <clears throat> liquid is not my favorite, but it does make, help the painting to dry faster. 
Um, yeah, that's a happy mess, right? So now I'll get out my pigments. Well, let me, I'm going to wipe away just a little bit here. <clears throat> Oops. It's messy. Uh -huh. That's good. All right, I'm going to get my... Look what I bought for myself this week. We were getting Isabel's stuff to go back to school, and I got a container for my pigment sticks that closes. I've been wanting that for so long. Like, dare I say, years? And it's small. It's convenient. Sometimes the simplest things are the hardest to, like, take care of. That's because it's not a priority, right? Oops, that's... So the pigment sticks get a little film on them. They dry out a little bit, so I'm getting my paper towel to clean it off a little bit. I've been using this one a little bit, but it's a little, I don't know, a little too thick for my liking. You can see how it like leaves like a thickness. <clears throat> so I just use these pigment sticks to kind of keep my painting loose. Good morning, Emerson. How are you? Oh, that's right. You have a delay today. I forgot about that. Lucky you. That's hardly even worth going to school. Are you painting this morning, Emerson? Emerson's been working on a lot of art projects on her Days off on the weekend. Hmm. That's a lovely mess, isn't it? All right, I think that's messy enough to dive into. <clears throat> Not today, but I art at school today. Lucky you. That was always my favorite. And Emerson, that's where I took art all growing up. I went to that school, but we didn't have that big fancy art room. We just had the art cart that would come down the hall. I loved when I'd hear the art cart coming down the hall. It's like my favorite sound. Oh, I didn't make like a neutral color for in this background. But here I have a little French it's called French Slate Gray. It's a Vasari color. I'm going to just put that out here and use that right out of the tube. A little bit of my background here to quiet that reckless crazy blue that I put in there. It's a little wet. Sometimes when it's a little wet, it like smears and it doesn't adhere. <clears throat> and I'm just saying that I'm just letting it be the problem. It's okay. See how much that um, color, that manganese blue hue is such a noisy color that it, I can't even cover it up. It just stays there. Hmm. I could wipe it off so that there's not so much of it. Um, do I want to do that? Maybe a little, maybe more down here. And then Just wiping a little bit because it is a little too dominant, but it's such a pretty color. She says, I love all your flowers. Thank you. Yeah, I was thinking about painting my cat today, but then I don't know why I decided not to, but maybe I'll do that next week. I do a lot of animal commissions, so that would be a good demo to do my own animal, my own 
old guy. Um, this goes here. Oh, boost of bust of blue eyes says, please paint your cat. Okay, I will. I'll make a plan to do that. Although I could forget, but I'll try not to. <laughs> Just like I couldn't remember Elibor this morning. I read somewhere that a good, not like a compositional thing, but something to think about in a painting, something that helps make it strong as if you have like <clears throat> at least three quarters of it is is in a dark value or three quarters of it is in a light value so that it's not like 50 50 so it's not so this painting is mostly in the lighter values very little darks in here so that helps keep it strong because it's not all um all 50-50 of value. Does that make any sense? I thought that was an interesting thing to think about. Uh, I need a little bit more for that background. Here's more of a brown. Maybe this brown will have a little more. Yeah. I think it was the French light gray was too um, soft also. better add a moderator oh <laughs> that my thing says that oh wasn't someone's comment once the algorithm wants me to add a moderator to my thing I don't even know how to do that Camarine has a similar statement in her book oh does she Helen Maybe that's where I heard it. Back in the day when I first started painting, I did um, watch a lot of her videos. I still love learning from other artists. Love it. Mm. So Michael just recently, who's on here, I think he's on here right now, right, Michael? He recently did a blog post about, because he's been, he was with me in France and... He's a fabulous artist himself, and he wrote a blog post about um, people he enjoys learning from. So it was a really nice, cohesive list of um, teachers, um, all kinds of things. I could add that. Where could I add that? Well, I could add to my YouTube channel link today. But, Michael, if you're on here, can you put the link in here to your post about that? And I'm proud to say I was in the list, which was really fun. But if you're looking for other people to learn from, like I have, <clears throat> I have an online, uh, what is this? This goes here. I have an online course called Art in Bloom. I'm teach. Oh, I'm teaching at Square Pair Gallery in Kennett Square in February. It is going to be so much fun. If anybody is thinking about learning from me, it's a great experience in a beautiful setting. It'll be lots of fun. I did it last year, so this is my um, doing it again because it, it I really enjoyed it. So if it's you're thinking about learning from me, it's a, um, it'll be fun. And Ken Kennett Square is such an adorable area. It's right near um, Longwood Gardens, near the Wyeth Museum. So there's lots of other things to do there also. So I'm teaching it on a Sunday and a Monday. I find that that works well to be part partly weekend, partly weekday. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Michael. He put it in here in the link. It's <clears throat> inspiredbycharm.com, my favorite online art courses. And it has um, hyphens in between. 
So it's very comprehensive. That must take you so long to gather all that, Michael. It has um, like YouTube people. It has um, um, in-person teachers, like all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> and I'm going to teach in France again in 2025. And I was actually talking to another group about doing a different European experience. So uh, that could happen too. It's a scary thing to say yes to, but it's such a cool experience to go and... What is happening here? I don't know what I have going on there. I'm a little confused. I need to make this... Is... The stem... And then that is the flower bit. That's better. Okay. <clears throat> or just search art on my blog. Okay, thank you, Michael. Yeah, just search for art. Hmm. It is appropriately messy. 8.32, so we're still okay on time. It's certainly spontaneous right now, isn't it? And I do like, I love some of those like crazy colors that are in there. So I'm going to try to hold on to that as I, I keep going. Um, that's partly what keeps it spontaneous is not fussing with it, just letting things happen. We spend so much of our lives trying to control everything. It is hard to just, like, let go and trust whatever's going to happen. And I've run out of everything. I have a few large commissions to do so I put in a huge order that I'm hoping is coming today but like I don't have any more of my panels that I usually paint on <clears throat> the raised panels I've like run out of everything <clears throat> paint brush in a garden says what brand and size brush are you using I still use liquid oh this well my brush first of all is a Trakel I love this brush it's a spectrum 3000 bright I don't know, is that focusing? Number 20. I think it's the biggest one they have. I wish they made this huge, huge, huge. Um, <clears throat> and, oh no, I'm not using liquid. I mixed those colors on my palette at the beginning and that's all that I'm using now are those mixed colors. So I only use that in my very first layer to, um, <clears throat> to kind of make a wet base to work into. And then I put it away. I don't use it at all. I mean, unless every now and then, like, a white will be very thick. And then sometimes I'll use my liquid, but <clears throat> not very often. I want to get that white line there, too. <clears throat> Hello to Argentina. Do you still use... Yes, Ellen, I still use the rosemary also. Carolyn says, love the composition. As you look at the photo, I would have had a tendency to capture the entire vase, but I love that the bottom is off screen. Much more interesting. 
Yeah, I do like that. Sometimes I play around with doing it like smaller in the middle and seeing the whole thing, but I feel like my style is a little bit more zoomed in and mm. yeah. <clears throat> Look at those colors in there. I love those colors. I don't know how I can hold on to them. I might try here. I might try to keep a little bit of that little rainbow colors in there. So pretty. I have to show that to you up close. Like when things like that happen, then I try to to not lose them. But I also don't want to get too precious with anything either. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. <clears throat> um, I didn't really mix any darker like reds for in here. Pinks, I guess they're not really red. Not at all. Um, um, so I'm trying to take my time and not rush through this because if you put down very intentional brush strokes, it definitely, it's, that's an oxymoron to say that. I'm, I'm trying to say that it, if I take my time and put down intentional brush strokes that it stays more spontaneous, but somehow that doesn't even make sense, does it? What am I saying? But somehow that's what I'm thinking. Like, I like to be spontaneous in the beginning, but not so much as the painting progresses. Like, in the beginning, I just like to let things happen and then think a lot more as I move forward with it. <clears throat> okay, I need to put my coffee. What's everyone having, coffee or tea? Did I ask that question already? Holding my breath a lot too when I'm doing. Coffee, me too. Tina added cinnamon to her coffee today. Living on the edge. <laughs> That's a fun idea. Erin's on her second cup of coffee. Erin, I was just thinking I might have to go for a second cup of coffee today. I still have to make it down to see your new house. Erin is my niece. And she lives in Arlington. Um, cold brew, even though it's cold out. Yes. I have tried cold brew. I do like it, but I don't usually drink it. I love how that mixed with that, um, that crazy blue in the background. It really mixed nicely. So now I have like that warmer color that I mixed up. I'm putting that kind of where everything kind of goes to the, goes around, around to the back, kind of.
that's a little bit of dark red right in here that gives that a little bit of a different shape I'll just do that <clears throat> did I miss anything no I don't think I did if you have questions or anything ask me again sometimes I miss them So it's like it's like rubbing your stomach and patting your head to like talk and paint and read all at the same time. Coming from a person who couldn't even remember the word hellebores a few minutes ago. <clears throat> oh, what do I want to do here? This my vase is too dominant. So I want to, um, it's very neutral in there. A lot of, I'm so impressed that you can do all three. Christina says, impressed that you can do all three. Talk, read. I do miss some of the messages, though. coming together I always wait until the very end to do my like my um <clears throat> lightest colors because I feel it keeps them fresher but sometimes it feels like a really long wait to get there because it looks funky without them <clears throat> got a little bit too much of a crazy bit of blue up here Get rid of that and work my way toward yeah, they look pretty good. Eight forty three, we're still okay on time. <clears throat> See, there's um, that's better. <clears throat> yeah, I like how it feels like it's like spreading out like this. <laughs> I love that feel. Maybe I need that my grays up in here a little bit better. Want my white showing. I'm not sure if I'm happy with that yet. Um <clears throat> Tiniest bit of highlight on here that would help. Yeah, that separated that a little bit. Okay, now I need to. I'm looking to see if I have other um, areas of uh, white showing. I kind of go through and check for that toward this part of the painting. And now I could go in maybe and work on my lights. My green's okay. Kind of 
fun. Okay. <clears throat> Almost ready to go in and work on some lights, but I still have a little bit of the darkest dark spots in here. And that lovely little light. Um, okay. Oh, and we have the centers to do also. Kind of just going to go around and start light putting lighter, lighter areas in. This is a complicated one, isn't it? You know, I don't stop to think about that. Sometimes I do, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that was a crazy one to do live. sip of my coffee. We still have 10 minutes. It's no rush. I still feel like I cannot quite get this dark enough. No, wait, let me add in a little bit of black into my green there. It doesn't have enough definition division or something. Something I learned with art when I'm painting too, like a lot of times something's wrong and I can't quite put my finger on it. It's like, I know even with copywriting, I'm such a bad copywriter. It's not by any stretch my favorite thing to do. It's not even something I even sort of like to do, but I always know when someone writes something, I know if something's wrong with it, but I usually don't know what's wrong with it. It's that learning and taking your time, like to now to go in and do these colors at the end like little things, like I love that in there. Like I don't want to lose some of those um, spontaneous colors showing through. So I just really have to take my time. And I'm still using the big brush because that forces me to not get too precious. That's enough of a suggestion. Like, I keep fussing with that a little bit, but I don't really want to because I only want to suggest the vase. It doesn't need to be um, anything. Um, like, the more you add to certain areas, the more important they become. And I like things just to be a quiet suggestion. I feel like I need a tiny brush too, but I'm not going to allow myself to do that because that'll tighten it all up. So cool that you use one brush for the whole painting. Yes, I always say that's because I'm a little lazy. I don't like, I don't like cleaning brushes, so I try very often to only use one brush, because then you'll have to wash one brush. Although when I paint large, that that's all out the window, and I'm using lots of brushes somehow I make a bigger mess. The bigger the painting, the bigger mess I make. The more I have to clean up. But that's okay. Um, this is lighter in here. brush strokes okay now I can do my some of my lighter lighter lights now so 
those a few things of the lightest colors differentiate it. Yeah, it's tricky <clears throat> keeping that because it's all such light, similar values. It's really hard to keep it, um, to have it feel like it feels. I don't know. It's hard to capture it, I guess is what I'm saying. Am I missing? Could do my little, my little, um, Sorry, I stopped talking, <laughs> thinking. Okay, so what do we see that needs adjusted? I'm looking at it through how you're seeing it in the camera. Um, that helped. I needed that differentiation in value right in there, and I think I need it. right in here because there comes a point in your painting where you kind of have to stop looking so much at the reference and think about what the painting itself needs not what you're seeing that might have gone a little too dark now my fussing with it and not making it better i always say that's when i know i'm finished so if i'm fussing with the painting and it's not improving it's just changing But I'm still having fun. I still have six minutes. That's lots. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What else am I missing, guys? I think I'm fussing. <laughs> Am I? Um, it might be a little dark. Okay, now I'm fussing with it and not making it any better. I don't know if that brown was a little reckless crazy in here. <clears throat> Cover that up just a little bit. And right here, I would love for this to do that. What do we think here? I'm shy of getting out a little tiny brush to get in those details. And this, because this, this image has so much happening in it, it's really hard to like not get lost in those details. But I'm just going to do a few little kisses of color here and we're going to call it a day. <clears throat> I 
Anita said, so gorgeous. I love the blue showing through. So do I. That was a fun, reckless, crazy fun, right? To use that, such a dominant color and see what happens. Okay. That's not, wait, wait, wait. Ah, it's always one more thing you can do. One more thing. All right, stop what you're doing put your paintbrush down sign it and then I'll show it to you up closer <clears throat> okay just time so there's my reference image and my painting so like I love those colors right in there aren't they fun I love when little unexpected pops of color happen like that and then there's the colors that we mixed. Hi, Madeline. So thanks for coming and hanging out with me today. Um, I will save this. It'll be on my YouTube channel if you would like to watch it. And the link's in my bio here on Instagram. And if you want to join me and learn from me at Square Pair Gallery in Kennett Square, I'll be there in February. And mm, what else? I don't know what else. So... Thanks for coming, guys. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you again next Wednesday. If you're in my Inspiring Art group, I'll see you at 11. All right, bye, everyone. Thank you.